work good fiber to function properly the colon needs to function properly uh, the the fiber is literally like a broom you know like a jhadu for the colon so and we need water so there is no dry cleaning the broom needs a lot of water and we also need uh, these antioxidants through the vegetables and fruits which work like what we call the detergents so they detoxify your body so we need uh, all the vegetables the brightly colored vegetables and fruits and everyone knows this this is not something which i'm saying it uh, i mean people are hearing for the first time uh, we keep talking about it but perhaps we don't take adequate quantities despite knowing it and uh, so that's that's one very obvious thing taking whole grains taking uh, uh, not sticking to just one grain or one staple or two staples typically we are just either taking rice or wheat and that's it so we need to introduce variety diversity is exceedingly important to achieve uh, good health uh, for our body and for the environment for the ecosystem so we need to preserve mother earth we need to also nourish our own selves and diversity is one of the keys for that so uh, we need to include millets we need to include jowar ragi bajra uh, brown rice all kinds of rice india can boast of such a vast variety we have a treasure of grains and whole grains so we were not meant to have uh, polished rice and polished uh, veda so we we are designed and our bodies are designed to take that and therefore we should go back to taking unpolished grains all the lentils and um, if something is getting very chronic if nothing like this is working you're taking enough water you're taking the vegetables and you take whole grains and you say you still have a problem then it's time to look out for a food sensitivity you may be adversely reacting to one of the things that we've spoken about either dairy or wheat or a combination of both and of course we have a one a wonderful my favorite uh, remedy for co constipation is coconut oil virgin coconut oil is brilliant uh, uh, works brilliantly as a laxative just take about 2 teaspoons or maybe 3 begin with one depending on who you are and your capacity so between 1 to 3 teaspoons in hot water can be taken in the morning and that really really works as uh, not only a laxative but it also reduces inflammation and uh, improves the gut flora i was talking about so it's it's excellent and now its role is being established even by researchers for mental health and for alzheimers and it's it's seemingly like a silver bullet for people who have mental uh, alzheimers and mental health issues so yes um, virgin coconut oil is there and there are other um, you know we have uh, figs specific foods but you know figs is one of those specific dry ingredients which help in um, in constipation we have prunes we have and uh, whenever you take these it's it's nice to take them so so all of these things were part of our traditional systems of um, eating you know we did soak our nuts we did soak our figs but somehow those things we didn't realize uh, understand the merits in what we were doing and uh, uh, many of us still don't understand it but i think it's nice to just respect the traditional practices and go back to them and uh, also if you want you can study and find the merits today i i find answers to so many things which uh, in fact in my system of uh, in fact i mean my my education is mainstream uh, nutrition i did my masters in nutrition and one of the um, things we were taught was uh, don't you know you must rice should be cooked with the right amount of water and the water must not be discarded and even if you are soaking it you should not uh, throw that water away and today i am eating my own words and, and that was a wrong practice right and today i am saying do that because I, i i understand what that really meant when you have water uh, thrown away when it's soaked you are getting rid of what we call lectins which can hurt your gut Correct. which is there for the improvement of digestion is important that you throw away the water and uh, there are other benefits in throwing away the water when the rice is being cooked uh, it takes care of some other uh, toxins and poisons so then you know like that so many things which we used to say uh, it doesn't matter whether you eat food in the morning or at night so even even people who have constipation must understand that it's not only what you are eating it's how much you are eating how you are eating and when you are eating so for a good digestive tract uh, for a good colon you need to 
heat at least but just i mean at least i would say give your 12 hour gap so 7 o'clock or 7:30 should be the last time you eat that will ensure that your digestive system works properly and again now we know why it's a whole a whole area of nutrition called chrono nutrition working along with the the chronological of the circadian rhythm so we are understanding it but we did not we forgot it somewhere so today we understand and if somebody has a problem with the gut i would say the first thing is to start correcting your meal timings correct and have you rightly said uh, ishi um this eating right and uh, no partying and all has also been some kind of a learning during the pandemic timing i mean like a lot of us have got used to eating and sleeping at the right time otherwise you know it's 2 am in the morning and we're still eating and uh, having a cheat uh, snack or something like that because you're working so uh, in a way it's been a very uh, learning kind of uh, experience for everyone uh, globally there is another question that is this flashing anna bhatte was saying that we cannot afford uh, organic food so could you list out some more organic foods and meanwhile shloka had asked you something about water how important is water therapy or e- e- drinking a lot of water i think uh, 70% of our bodies are is water and we it is important to function basically even all your nerve impulses also in the body the messages in the body the neurotransmitters all of that transmission is happening when there is water if there, in there, there is less water this is going to suffer your functionality is going to suffer so you know there uh, it's a common thing detoxification um for proper functioning of the body everything is dependent on water you know so we mm-hmm. we have you pass passage of urine we perspire all of these are through with water so we if we don't have enough water we are not going to be cleaning up properly so it's like your own house treat your body like your house if you yeah. don't clean up if you don't have that uh, you know cleaning up uh, operation it's going to accumulate toxins so and how much water it depends on each person but average we always say we have about two and a half i mean you know to maybe 8 to 10 glasses roughly uh, a rough figure is 30 ml per kg body weight so you can decide what it is and but it will depend on some people may still take all of this and need more and some people depending on their constitution or their or the weather conditions may require less so depending a little bit here and there but unless and until you have a kidney problem or a heart uh, failure issue you you should be good with taking water but don't go crazy taking too much also some people just then overdo things and that's also counterproductive but um, thirst is not an indicator but what is really a good indicator to adequate water is your color of urine uh, that should always remain as light as possible and um, i think that uh, should give an answer to everybody yes correct and friends remember as you keep watching please do keep sharing and keep sending us your questions uh, below so ishi another thing that i needed to ask you is most people produce about 1 to 3 pints of gas a day and pass gas about 14 to 23 times a day uh, when does this kind of problem become symptomatic or problematic when some foods uh, while some foods uh, we can you know use and eat to combat this which are those so see where is this gas coming from it's coming from um, the the like we talked about the gut microbiome they, when they ferment when they work and they they are working on the foods they are releasing gases so some amount of gas is normal during the digestive process but more, too much when it becomes uh, you know like a discomfort or you feel bloated um then or it's smelly there is a problem in your digestion that means your gut flora is not happy so there again you come to the you know solution through if you have eaten the right amount of food if you have eaten at the right time and you've done everything right and you're exercising uh, and yet this problem comes then you are definitely reacting to some foods so you need to do uh, what we call an elimination uh, of the suspected foods then make a diary and see how you feel uh, without those foods and then do some testing maybe you have a food allergy or a food intolerance or gluten sensitivity or a dairy sensitivity 
or sometimes even uh, you know some vegetables etc and then go seek professional help so just mm -hmm. taking in students just taking in uh, digestives and moving on will only give you relief symptomatically but you haven't still got the real culprit so it's important to get down to finding out what is the cause for this and you can seek professional help but in my experience it's very interesting while a lot of people felt oh we can't tolerate that we, we are you know we can't take moong dal we can't take any dal gives us gas and uh, when we take away the the um, culprit grains when we take away the wheat and the corn and some other uh, related grains um they are able to tolerate the dal so dals have been condemned to be causing gas and they can cause gas and uh, you know lentils and of course pulses like rajma and chana also are uh, gas producing to most people but these people who believed that they could not tolerate um the uh, the lentils and the, they begin to feel all right with them so somewhere sometimes we we can also mistakenly identify food so we need to be seeking professional help and um i think certain vegetables also we all know traditionally india is very smart that way you know uh indian practices are so smart that you be surprised and each time i get i marvel at these uh, traditional practices uh just imagine a dal which is heavy or a vegetable which is heavy is always cooked with ginger or ghee always you know there is that element which is taken care of some ajwain or some ginger will always be given and um, you know so we have such smart practices so i uh, gobi hai you know matar hai ye aapke broccoli hai they are, they can cause irrit you know little bit of and there are reasons for that but uh, yeah and uh, you look at post pregnancy how in india traditional practices uh talking about the gut a woman's gut after pregnancy in the third trimester becomes very uh, very bad almost like an ibd patient it's it's really a unhealthy gut and that's why a lot of problems follow post delivery whether it's depression or you know other autoimmune problems etc cetera, etc cetera. but the indians i mean most households will give them ajwain ka pani zeere ka pani uh, you know those soft ka pani that was so sensible so like i said my respect for traditional practices has always been there there but i still marvel at them each time i think of the things that we have been doing and we i mean we did them mindlessly when i was in that state we just did it because our mother in law told us to do it but uh, today i realize why you know the importance of it i could never understand what my mother in law said said when she said are abhi nahi karogi dhyan rakhogi to aage ja ke darde hongi i said what you know this just didn't make sense to me but today i completely understand that but uh, yeah traditional practices and uh, certain things we still have to change like because they are traditionally done but we still need to tweak them so i think a good combination of nutrition science and our traditional practices is absolutely beautiful to empty your bowels first thing in the morning anything that you can suggest uh, one is of course you mentioned about the coconut uh, oil uh, remedy which is putting i think 2 to 3 day Tea tablespoons or teaspoons in warm water. Teaspoons. Anything else that teaspoons in anything else that you can. Talk But about? like I said, there is papaya, there is guava. We have all these various nice fruits which are laxative in nature. Um, but they are all known to people. They don't need me to tell them. But what is not known to people is a magnesium deficiency. Mm -hmm. It's an uncharted area, completely uh, unrecognized, and uh, will be difficult to you know even establish the deficiency. but we know for a fact that uh, we are not absorbing whether we are not taking is one part but we are not getting enough magnesium into our uh, cells so uh, perhaps because of malabsorption um like many others like whether it's vitamin d we don't have enough vitamin b12 iron they're all you know we are on critically low levels and uh, this one unfortunately we can't test for we we can test for but it doesn't reflect the cellular levels so it's difficult to establish this deficiency but anybody with constipation is definitely seriously uh, magnesium deficient and needs to therefore i said seek professional help and take a supplement uh, i wouldn't recommend 
people taking supplements on their own, but they have to be taken in a specific way. But a magnesium deficiency is one of the most uh, effective way of, I mean, correcting a magnesium deficiency is one of the most effective ways of dealing with constipation, in my experience. Then there is a question which says that uh, what should we include in the diet for one to two year old kids suffering from severe constipation? Can the kid continue to breastfeed? Oh, yes, and it means like coming back to the same uh, instance which I told you. So the mother needs to watch her diet. And uh, if such a small child is suffering from uh, constipation, then I think uh, food sensitivity looks very, very probable. So they should look out for changing the grains, giving the baby ragi, jwar, and not giving them wheat and not giving them dairy and sing. I've had this one case who came to me, she was 11 year old, uh, 11 year old girl with literally a pot belly. You know, she had, she was gaining a lot of weight, but she also had a huge tummy and the mother again complained that the child had severe constipation. She, she would again go once in three, four days, sometimes longer. And it used to be so hard. The stool used to be so hard that uh, it used to bleed and she used to cry, you know. So it's unreal for a child. And she said, I've been to everybody under the sun. I mean, in my city, mm -hmm. the top names I have visited in hospitals and uh, private practice, and nobody seems to be able to correct my child's uh, problem. And they keep saying, fiber do, or ye do, wo do, to wo mm -hmm. kaam nahi kar And um, to the extent, she said, it was bleeding so much that she thought that the child was getting a period early in that oh. age. So it was that bad. And so this is just to tell you that, you know, people are suffering. And we just removed these two elements. And within the first week, she responded. And after that, she was within three months. When she finished her program with me, she was so grateful. The child had become a normal child. So we do miss out on these things. And um, sometimes it can really be. And they, it's not only... See, constipation is one manifestation of inflammation or a bad colon. So it will not stop here. The constipation is only telling us that something that is being eaten, eaten is wrong. But the manifestation can be in the form of autoimmune problems. It can be in the, you know, she can develop a thyroid. She can develop a hair fall. She can develop polycystic ovaries or joint problems or men, you know, other problems. So these are just the body is telling you, the body is talking to you. So we need to take cognizance. ECG, since we've spoken about children, uh, Madhu Jain writes in, what are some of the best nutritional food for growing up children? Please let us know some basics. Uh, as a mother, I think we all know what is important for a growing child. But let me re repeat it, that a child, first of all, needs adequate calories, sufficient food. Uh, the child needs sufficient proteins and uh, I think just a well-balanced diet is what is needed with lots of plant food thrown in, uh, fruits as snacks. Just remove, remove the junk and go back to the traditional forms of eating and that's what a child needs. Uh, yes, dairy is needed. Um, if, if your child can tolerate dairy, then I would definitely recommend uh, milk in uh, whatever form, uh, dahi, paneer, whatever and uh, nuts and seeds and good fats, pretty much what an adult requires. And uh, just ensure that this child is not showing any signs of any uh, problems, by, uh, which we probably ignore. Like if there's acne or if there is a hair, you know, hair loss or if there is a deficit of energy or there are some uh, sleep issues or some mood issues or some other you know, digestive issues, then you need to work on specifics for the diet. Uh, but um, Overall, if your child is healthy and uh, all right, a well-balanced diet with, uh, you know, with good meals and uh, having healthy snacks is, is common sense. And ensuring some raw vegetables also is important. Ensuring the greens are there, ensuring the amlas and the vitamin C is there, you know, and, um, you know, the seeds, etc., which can be very easily put into their foods. Um, so, and yes, children also like their variety. So make sure that the ch child is eating with, you know, is enjoying his food. And there's something to see, to be said about uh, food, uh, you know, which I must add here that we are talking about, uh, I think I heard something about food for survival. Yes, we eat food for survival, but we mostly eat beyond that. We are today eating for pleasure. 
and we cannot take it away from us you know that pleasure that food gives us must be kept and must be one of the important reasons why you eat food besides the survival and uh, so therefore just make sure you enjoy the food that you eat and it's the kind of food that um, you know will give you the maximum benefit but sure. don't get me wrong you know people will say oh we love sugar so we should eat sugar that's not what i'm saying the next segment is on acid reflux uh, when we talk about acid reflux again the statistic that uh, we had mentioned initially more than 10 million cases per year alone in india antacids are supposed to be the most commonly abused drug the pink bottles are a staple in almost all uh, drug cabinets across households so what is going wrong uh, with what we are consuming and what are some of the natural ways through which we can combat this um yes i think um it's something within within our food um, and our diet that is contributing to this and i would also say beyond our diet um in the current urban scenario it's probably too much of alcohol also which has kept crept in so right from processed food eating foods outside the house uh now i i have a lot of patients who say you know when we eat this food um um it at home it's fine but when the same food we eat outside the house it gives us acidity uh why is that and i i follow my patients very closely because i make them write their diaries so we know from you know uh, the cause and effect for very closely and the patient who has eaten home food is not complaining like and as nidhi said you know the covid has taught us that a lot of people say you know we have been so healthy through this covid time we we you know we haven't fallen ill we haven't had a food poisoning because everyone's eating at home and eating better but yes the minute the outside food starts so what's the outside food what is it all about so there are just several reasons when people are eating out they are getting a lot of hidden chemicals which are added to increase or improve the flavor of the food so those <clears throat> you will never know even if it's a simple dal makhani or if it's a you know malai paneer or whatever there are a lot of things which are added which you will never know which are flavor enhancers that also is something which bothers people so eating out eating packed food processed food with a lot of ingredients mentioned are some things of what we call red but flags she, yes, i want to stop you here iska matlab bahar khana hi nahi khaye ye to ho nahi sakta na नहीं ये इनका जवाब है टू एसिड रिफ्लक्स इनको होता है उनको क्यों होता है और हम और आप भी तो रोज दाल सब्जी भी खा सकते हैं बिरयानी खाने का मन करते हैं खा सकते हैं अगर आपको एसिड रिफ्लक्स नहीं है पर जिनको है ये हाँ हाँ खा सकते हैं बिल्कुल इंटेलिजेंटली खाइए बाहर इंटेलिजेंट चॉइसिस में करिए फ्राइड फूड बाहर ना खाए यू नो सो those are some simple things but certainly if you so again coming back to acid reflux uh, bad fats also are culprits in uh, reused oil is a culprit for reflux and um, so these are certainly uh, very common uh, areas apart from that uh, i find that um, the grains which can inflame the system besides of wheat or corn and even soya which are healthy grains but they can cause reflux and um, even uh, <clears throat> in some people the very good grains like amaranth and oats can also be triggers in people who are wheat sensitive these are definitely uh, part of that list and dairy products so if you are very severe then dairy also so in my opinion and in my experience it's the grains which create the inflammation and then the dairy becomes a secondary consequence to that so first heal the gut with the grains and then look at dairy as a possible uh, cause and um, then of course uh, we have too much of animal protein like i started i mentioned in the beginning um, animal protein as in uh, too much of meats red meats processed meats um, you know if you have them on a regular basis and i think some people do have them on a regular basis and they are easily available now so they will have sausages and bacon and ham maybe on a regular basis twice or thrice a week or even in every day basis sometimes in children they give you know tiffins with these kind of uh, meats so they can also be a cause for uh, and triggers um so pretty much the foods which um, have these ingredients and um 
like somebody said organic food is not possible for everybody but certainly uh, the, the the least intake of pesticides can be assured by growing some foods on your own even if you have a few pots kuch kuch to apni sabziyan koi uga hi sakta hai thode thode patches mein community bhi kar sakti hai hmm. rws bhi isme kar sakti hai madad so that at least you lower the intake of uh, because these are being consumed every day you know something which you consume one off is different but something which you are consuming every day will add up because these pesticides have a cumulative effect they are cumulative poisons and they are persistent poisons they never leave the atmosphere they never leave the body so it's important that you reduce this load in your body so yeah i think i i would pretty much leave it at that and ensuring that uh, you eat in time going back to that and taking adequate amounts of fruits and vegetables that makes the body alkaline so i have a very simple uh, way of dealing with this um that at, at least one meal one meal dedicate to vegetables and fruits have have vegetables in all the three meals but dedicate one meal to just having soup salad and maybe cooked vegetables or vegetable tikkis or just fruits sometimes and certain days in a week jo hamare purane um wo jo practices going back to tradition is fasting it is such a way such a strong uh, i would say um it was a you know a tool it was such a important like a what you can say that like a bullet it was so mm. powerful in correcting your system even the worst ill people can fast people believe are fast karenge to weakness ho jayegi humse to hota nahi but it's very empowering and it actually makes you so much more energetic and stronger and uh, this whole conversation these days is all about intermittent fasting and so if you do intermittent fasting you will get benefits because you give your body rest to heal <laughs> and likewise if you just do alternate day fasting which is having just vegetables and fruits every alternate day it's a very powerful thing anyone who understands this will be really thanking me if you practice it just being on vegetables and fruits alternate day is like those traditional fast we did kabhi koi tuesday ka karta hai fast koi thursday ka karta hai koi friday ka karta hai to ye tarike bane the ye religion me usko dal diye gaye because it was so beneficial absolutely and also uh, here uh, i'd like to add ki uh, one is fasting and the other is uh, less uh, people who are vegetarians have caught the covid as we speak i mean the numbers actually show that so it is time to at least if you are a non vegetarian then at least twice a week you should abstain from having non veg it's my suggestion though we are all vegetarians here today so i i really don't know um, but it's a very been... very nice thing to say absolutely okay. now let's and uh, yeah yeah i think uh, it's such a simple thing to do you know and it's a question of also changing your palate jab aap itna zyada um processed food khate ho to aapko fresh cheezon ki aapko pasand hi nahi aate you know you don't enjoy those but you have to change your palate so then when you start eating right then the body doesn't like unhealthy food it it works both ways so there are we take some live questions uh, one is that um Wolf has real problems. He actually faces discomfort after eating normal atta roti, but after eating maida roti, naan, rumali, there is no issue. Could this be? Yes, it could absolutely be. Uh, because uh, here, what happens is um, the load, the the protein content of maida is much lower than atta. and uh, what happens is the gluten obviously gets minimized in maida so he is probably sensitive to gluten and in that form he it's not so perceptible but certainly he is reacting to something in the protein part of uh, the the grain so the next question is from margarita what to do if lentils cause bloating also do you recommend oatmeal um i think this person should do a food sensitivity test i told you earlier that sometimes we do mistake and we we mistake the villain it's not the lentils it may be something else so the a food sensitivity an igg food sensitivity test is recommended for her 
and uh, you know she can also eliminate a few grains at home maintain a food diary and see how she feels and then if she tolerates lentils it will be confirmatory so you like in the navratras a lot of people in those 9 days don't eat wheat and those conventional grains and they feel a million bucks which they you know normally get so those are ways in which you can test your body also is she yeah mai matlab wo fir wohi apne track pe aa rahi hu जो जियो आई वाला ट्रैक है कि जब आप कुछ खरीदते हैं तो प्लीज लेबल देख लीजिए एफ एस एस ए आई रेगुलेटरी का लेबल आप जरूर देखें जब भी आप कुछ भी खरीदने जा रहे हैं दाल ले रहे हैं आप ऑयल ले रहे हैं कुछ भी ले रहे हैं एंड इशी विल सपोर्ट मी ऑन दिस क्वालिटी एब्सोल्युटली क्वालिटी इज क्रिटिकल एंड थैंक गॉड फॉर एफ एस एस ए आई इट्स रियली बिकम सो एक्टिव एंड डूइंग सो मच गुड वर्क सो मच ऑफ रेगुलेशन एंड थैंक गॉड फॉर पवन सर एंड व्हाट ही इज डन टू द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन I mean, he is not here, but FSSAI who be synonymous with Pavan Agarwal ji. He turned it around completely. Absolutely, what a wonderful job the GOI has done. Absolutely. And at me, we are probably at le- you know levels where globally people are still haven't reached. So full marks. Fortification, oil fortification. You all must see all of this when you're buying something or eating something. What is going into your body is of immense importance, so friends. So, can next question? Next question is comes from Anthony. Anthony has been a participant of ours, so I smile when I take this question. Why do you recommend milk? Didn't you say milk is not healthy? So, in the yogic sciences, we have told our participants to not consume milk at all because it sticks to the colon. and the first you won't be able to sort of have a clean colon if you uh, consume dairy or milk so uh this if you can ishi ji please address this i think first thing i'd like to tell this individual is it's about perspective we talk from yogic sciences uh ishi ji is slightly more mainstream but even she has a very good rationale behind why in some cases uh people have reacted to dairy unfavorably and it is constipating in nature so ishi ji could you perhaps align this question uh In a I'm so glad this sense. question has come up because um, I think the beauty of Ayurveda lies in individualizing and customizing diets. So milk may be bothering some people, but not everybody. So I am not uh, ever going to say that milk is bad for everybody. No, if you have a leaky gut, it is bad for you. It will be bad for you. if you have wheat sensitivity it is bad for you but i am in no way suggesting that it's bad for everybody and uh, so if you have chronic issues in the family if you have a family history of uh, you know diseases which are uh, you know coming from inflammation like cancer or heart disease then maybe you have a red flag there if you have yourself some chronic problems sinusitis or other inflammatory conditions then it's a red flag but if you are otherwise all right then um of course having said that dairy again in india is not just dairy there are so many issues with dairy getting the right unadulterated form of dairy is an issue getting um the uh, a1 and a2 milk right is an issue so i think uh, there is you know a1 is uh, inflammatory and a2 is less inflammatory so it depends on you and your gut and if otherwise you have a healthy gut and you are um, you know i would say most of my patients i mean that may help answer this question now the more clearly people who come to me in general i i i i do not ask them to go off dairy in the first instance unless they have a disease i mean they have some struggles and then i definitely take it out but uh, that's not the first step that we work with but yes autism and just so it depends on who you are Let's let's put it that way. Nidhi ji, would you like to take on the next question? This is your favorite question. It's on immunity. I think you've been a you're a pioneer on immunity, Nidhi ji, with being with science and technology. <laughs> Please unmute yourself. Nidhi ji, you're on mute. You'll have to unmute yourself. Gut and immunity. How are they connected, Nidhi ji? ah the gut and immunity oh my god they are like your immune system is in the gut it's two thirds of your immune system or you can say whatever it is 70% or 80% of your immune system sits in the gut and we spoke about the gut microbiome 
these are the these are your arsenal these are the real fighters for you so if you have a good gut flora you will definitely have a good and a strong and a robust immune system they they not only make those inflammatory the uh, immunomodulating and the kind of your army your immunoglobins etc they also determine what food you are digesting and absorbing yeah. right so even your nutritional status whether we're talking of zinc or we're talking of vitamin c or we're talking about iron or we're talking of vitamin b12 or we're talking of vitamin d a b c d whatever it is it is these bacteria and fungi inside which determine the absorption levels yes. whether you're absorbing optimally or no so right from your nutrition to the body's uh, you know the immunoglobins and the you know the arsenal that i call them they are determining everything the inflammation in the body is determined by them so and we we have uh, you know uh, we have data to say that people who have inflamed bodies are far more uh, you know in terms of their immune systems more prone to getting the infection and once they get the infection they are far more likely to have uh, you know negative outcomes and mortality compared to those who who are not so there is a whole uh, you know i think gut and immunity are so intertwined with each other that uh, you cannot have a healthy immune system uh, without having a good gut and uh, i think uh, the best way to uh, explain that will be through um, you know courses of antibiotics every time what disturbs the gut flora it's the, also these medicines uh, the medicines which we were supposed to take in crisis time with discretion with a lot of prudence are now becoming just for the common cold and flu so every time you take a an antibiotic or you take a course of any uh, prolonged course of an, your uh, uh, steroids or your painkillers or anti inflammatories whatever you eat as medicines will destroy your gut flora a single course of antibiotic can destroy your gut flora completely so you can imagine mm-hmm. your immunity is gone and don't you experience that that once you took a course of antibiotic two two months later again you got the infection and then again you got the infection and it would get into a spin mm-hmm. and whether you get the same infection again or you get a uti or you get something else certainly you know that by observation absolutely so well said then you help us understand um shloka gut and mental health maybe yes i think sadguru has spoken spoken about spoken about this and uh, unclean colon and psychological disturbances are so interlinked um it has been scientifically observed that mood disorder anxiety uh, depression are about 50 times higher in patients who are constipated vis-a-vis the general population so can you please shed some light on this issue ji again um it's the gut is actually called the second brain if there are we thought this was our brain and this was controlling our emotions and everything yes it has a important role to play but if there is one message coming from the brain to the gut this is called a gut brain axis they are connected and if there is one message which is coming from the brain to the gut there are eight messages which are coming from the gut to the brain mm. so you can imagine how active this is and how this is controlling this is a control center it's a panel like i said the control panel most of the serotonin 80% of the serotonin the dopamine and the tryptophan are secreted in the gut 80% of the melatonin which is also anti inflammatory is secreted in the gut so you can imagine and it is what is what is this orchestra being played the orchestra is being played by the gut microbiome so if they are unhappy if we don't mm. treat them well if we give them foods which they don't like if we put them uh, you know we we put chemicals in them or we put food and which is unhel- unfriendly or unhelpful uh, for them um we are going to have a problem so you're absolutely right mental health issues are far more common with people who have digestive issues uh, even the people with celiac disease who have a gluten intolerance uh, you know mental health issues are very very closely related whether it's schizophrenia bipolar depression anxiety mood swings panic attacks all of that and i see them on a routine basis and the beauty is that many of them who have been on long term medication 
they actually have left their meditation and dedicated their you know they just transform their lives they've embraced their new lifestyles and their new eating patterns to the you know to the point where they know the difference that if they eat something wrong even a crumb of something wrong and they know that their uh, you know brain is going to pick it up and they will have a problem so so these are very very important uh, conversations and uh, for the future also that how do we treat these because depression is becoming one of the it's it, it's going up and particularly in india whether it's suicide or whether it's mental health issues are going out of the window and with this covid has not helped so it's yeah. just adding on a burden and a whole dimension to our healthcare system which was not there earlier uh, we didn't see those kind of problems so and uh, behavior issues in autistic children it's like i was talking to you i i see it all the time and the, what is the treatment diet uh, treatment of course they have medical treatment as well but the dietary management of uh, these kids is a very very strict gluten free and casein free diet which is a gluten free diet and a milk free diet dairy free diet and um, this ch these children come around so beautifully i had this one child who used to bang his head on the wall to a point where he could get injured he would you know he had sores on his forehead and this he was on medication he was taking treatment from his set from the center for autism and uh, going to school in in a very dedicated uh, facility where there were professionals and experts in this area but yet diet was never addressed but when he came to me through a referral we uh, we first focused on this uh, uh, you know food sensitivity issue and within i would say in the next in the first month his head banging was going down every day he used to bang his head for 3 3 hours it went down to half and then it went down to half an hour a day and then by the end of the two months he was completely fine and then the same child by mistake was fed a muffin which was with wheat in class by mistake after six months of recovery and we had a roll back it took us three months to heal the gut again now he's fine of course so we see these things are very very closely related and i think they do uh uh seem to be now the treatment modalities for health and disease for the future and um, these these there is so much published lit published literature on these that uh, our medical professionals need to be uh, acquainted with this and uh, have, we haven't talked about cancer we haven't talked about those areas but they are also completely you know we get our answers when we look into the gut we know that this cancer patient this breast cancer patient had chronic constipation she had no other risk factor but she had chronic constipation we we can find out our answers we can what like i say join the dots is it see there has been again a common question with regards to inflammatory bowel disease crohn's disease ulcerative colitis can this be cured through diet and with what kind of diet Oh, of course it can be cured it is that totally uh, again we have patients who have been on we've been told that they, they'll be on lifelong medication and uh, when they uh, seek the dietary uh, you know the management and they they follow it to the t their medicines go away and yet they also know that if they have cheated and the system is so smart the science is so accurate that this one particular patient i am reminded of because he he used to on medication also have bleeding or on medication he would have multiple stools at you know in a day and uh, so he was very unhappy so the first thing that happened was the symptoms went away despite and the medicines were still there gradually one by one one by one over 2 3 months this medicines also went away so by 6 months he was pill free and he was only on dietary management he was very keen on having milk and uh, he said mere ko kabhi to khane do matlab paneer kabhi main kha lo dahi i said up i can only try let's try so i said we'll start with a2 milk in small quantities but i think he uh, he when he came to me he had already had paneer and milk and something in 10 days he had had all three um but he came to me in a panic that my symptoms have started again my uh you know my bleeding has started and everything was like back to pretty bad 
So I said, but why we were going to start small? So he said, no, I thought I could have it. So I started having it. So he couldn't tolerate it. So yes, we know that uh, these things are uh, totally, you know, they, they are pure science and this is to, they are inflammatory to such people. And um, we can absolutely manage them. The way to do it is, first of all, we what we say, we rip, you know, eliminate the, the, the culprit uh, grains and the foods. And we, un, you know, we understand the body and the system. We correct that, then we replace the nutritional, you know, the deficits which are there. And then we restore the gut flora and rebuild the gut. So that's how we do it. Are there some foods that you can maybe talk about? Uh, because there's this individual who's written that I have tried everything from allopathic medicine to Ayurvedic med medicine. The ulcerative colitis disease, disease diet plays an important role. So he'd like to know what he can consume. I'm sorry, Anything that there's no such a magic bullet that he can consume. It's a whole process. Like I said, it's a four-step process and we need to do it. Um, so those you know, juice, uh, sorry to butt in, but I had a question, Ishi. Um, yeah. Maybe yeah. for those who cannot have milk and paneer and such like things, they, they also can't have things like ice cream and all. I'm sure you give certain other things. So oh, the, yes. know, is not feeling bad, That's a wonderful know. question, Nidhi, because today's availability of alternatives is mind-blowing. Ah, so getting, you can get vegan cheese, you can get ice creams with, uh, with almond milk, milk and milk, milk, milk and no milk. additives. It's all there today. So yeah, and I, I, people are in the process of making chicken, which is not, you know, animal processed. So, so much happening now. You know, people with, people with gluten sensitivity you, cannot take so uh, Don't feel so bad. Uh, if yeah. you go to good people, you get good choices. And then you can, you know, make up your mind and not keep thinking, oh, I can't have milk, I can't have paneer, I can't have that. And I can't. Yes. There are choices. I, I was actually feeling bad, you know, what what a child was we going through. The only thing we keep thinking, you know, rethinking in our mind, I can't even think of it. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, it's a process of embracing it. So this one patient recently had a daughter, has a daughter. And uh, she she became absolutely all right. She used to have uh, vomiting and, you know, tummy aches, etc. Very bad, violent vomiting. Wo sab ho gaya. And then she thought, Ab and you know, so we know that and uh, some when she was absolutely okay, kabhi wo, jo cheez, even chips mein agar hai, to usko tang karta tha. Usko, you know, so she understood it, but yet she went back into reintroducing those foods and it, it was a rollback. So people who suffer active symptoms, they definitely don't want to go that way. But people who don't have active symptoms. And you know, say they don't they don't have diarrhea and they don't have vomiting. Um, they don't recognize the importance of this. But if they have a skin problem, which is you know just not bothersome, they will continue to you know try and introduce kabi khalia. So immediately pata nahi chala. But the fire is lit. The inflammation will happen. Um, one minute. If not milk, then buttermilk. Is that a substitute? Is that a question? Yes, yes. Uh, unfortunately, these are so customized that I cannot answer that. Some people, yes. Some people, no. Depends on who you are and what we are treating. Right. And as a, as a mainstream, like she said, mainstream, we are trained yes. not to remove things of, if it's unwarranted. So I would like to give you more variety. I don't like to take out things. When I do it, I'm compelled to do it because I know it won't work for you. But uh, without reason, I wouldn't put it out. Because buttermilk is good. I mean, buttermilk is wonderful for people who can tolerate it. In fact, from the yogic point of view, since he's asked us, Jaya uh, Preeti, Sampat, Akka, buttermilk is actually supposed to be a very highly pranic food substance. In fact, during summers, this is a fantastic drink. drink. So from the uh, yogic point of view, what I'll have to say to you is that the properties of buttermilk are very different from milk. So by all means, it's a go ahead with buttermilk. No problems at all. From the yogic point of view, since you asked. Yes, uh, Nidhiji, would you like to take on the next question? Uh, what are your views uh, 
on a natural laxative uh, issue uh, things like is of gold trifla people are you know addicted to these kind of things and they also taking uh, regular enema these days what about all this i would say uh, one thing very important that if you don't have any obvious reason for constipation you are not on any you no know, constipating drugs or anything please try and find out why you have constipation your answers may be in the food that you are eating and we don't want habit forming laxatives isab gold is not habit forming so i'm all for it for other benefits it's a prebiotic mm. and it's a wonderful uh, added uh, bonus to your diet so go ahead and have it trifla also is not habit forming so go ahead and have it but you know if you are needing them or depending uh, on them every day there is a problem so you like i said there could be nutritional deficiencies in that issue there could so you something in the food is not agreeing with you so go take a deeper dive take professional help and find out what it is rather than an occasional laxative here and there hurts nobody an occasional anema hurts nobody but if it is about uh, you know needing it every day it's it's time to look out for the reasons correct what about inflammatory bowel disease like crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis can this be cured through diet and if so what kind of diet i think that question was already answered yes yes uh, just one yeah. answer please tell us uh, all these have been answered there is one more flashing uh, i can see a question flashing shloka would you like to so, take yeah sure sure so can you tell us about some general dietary practices for a healthy gut as a preventive measure okay um first of all for a healthy gut let's look at what you are eating right so uh, begin your morning with something which your gut likes so apple apple puree is wonderful for your gut um your virgin coconut oil oil i told you so some dry fruits and some nuts some natural fresh fruits in the morning fruits are actually best taken in the morning so add those wonderful uh, you know gifts of good health to your gut in the morning and um, it could be any seasonal fruit it doesn't have to be a very specific high end exotic fruit which we're talking about it could be a simple thing like a banana or just uh, you know the local berries of the season whatever it is and uh, then ensure that uh, you are not feeling like uh, you know the the quantity of food should not be too much so what quantity you are eating is very important mm, you know uh, the the best rule for this is described by the japanese the japanese use the phrase hara hachibu which means uh, you don't have to fill yourself to the top you don't have to feel feel uh, feel filled you should just be pleasantly full when you stop eating so whatever meal whether breakfast lunch and dinner eat mm -hmm. when you are only 80% up to 80% fullness not beyond that and uh, you know then the last meal of the day like i said should be eaten well in time for a good gut so what you're eating how much you're eating and when you're eating and how you're eating eat chew well eat your food with uh, with your mind in it mindfulness you half the time all of us are doing things and then you know eating on the side and before the covid we were eating in the car most of us were eating at least one meal in the car you know and uh, so I that still do that uh, i still do that all all day in the car yeah. but put your mind in it you know your energy must be and this is a yogic practice also it's you know that focus on what you are eating to get that benefit say a small prayer get those vibrations into your food so mindfulness and eating with uh, with your you know awareness is very important so how you are eating your food when you are eating everything matters and all of that will definitely favorably improve your gut apart from all the conversation we've had in the past about having adequate water having the right kind of nutrition vitamin d is very important for gut function so nutritionally you must be adequate and uh, take some prebiotics take some probiotics take the fiber rich food that's all prebiotic and um, take a high degree i mean a high quantity of vegetables and fruits we've spoken about that the whole things and uh, just keep out the junk and if you enjoy the junk 
then make sure and i'll tell you something about junk i don't have to if if you start eating right and remove the unhealthy food from your diet for some time your body stops asking for unhealthy food so i don't even have to tell you don't eat processed food don't eat unhealthy food. and the, the thing is that if you put it back into your diet it pulls you back like a drug mm-hmm. it makes you want more so that is a subject what we call addictive foods and a whole system of conversation uh it's a system called endocannabinoid system they, they it is a system which it's got that cannabis effect it wants that kind of food so they, and it needs to be satisfied it's a new conversation piece so there are foods which are addictive so those foods which are addictive you must be aware like sugar coffee etc etc and the various you know the the chemical uh, addictive foods that are chemicals which are added to make it addictive so these we know that there is a science around it so avoid those foods which which make you addicted so uh, cut down on sugar sugar if you have more sugar you want more sugar so cut back on i'm not saying mat lo lekin kam karo and bahar ka khana aap jitna loge why does that one packet of chips not ever mean two chips or three chips it means the whole mm-hmm. packet there is an addictive element in that so be very mindful of what you're eating kabhi bhi kha lo to theek hai lekin don't let it become a regular practice so be mindful of those things and i think your gut will be happy and if still it remains uh, troubling you are doing something then check it out and on that note so, yeah. it will be i think we can just take one last question ishi ji if right. i think just take just one question because a couple of individuals have asked what are the best meal timings uh, that you can suggest um here is again i love the concept of the ayurvedic system where uh, we go by the sun the peak hunger the peak agni the peak fire of the digestive fire is between 11 and 1 and between 5 and 7 these are my favorite times and most it coincides my experience with my patients most people feel hungry at that time but if you are a person who wakes up and love, loves to eat his breakfast at 8 and um you know a mid morning snack and a lunch and a evening it's your choice i have no problems with that but the last meal must finish with sundown that's what is important and again if there, if you are a person who's who, you know so many people complain today oh, we were feeling hungry yes yes ah that we are you know we uh, are up at night or uh, no matter yes. there is no lot of there you can drink your you know some water but don't burden your digestive system with things which it has to work harder for so make it a very light snack or a light uh, food whatever whatever works for you so that's my advice so we're now completely out of time and thank you so much uh, ishi ji for joining us today and sharing such insightful pearls of wisdom with us uh, we hope you can all implement this and make your life more meaningful and uh, become healthier and to connect and know more about uh, ms ishi coast life you can visit her website flashing on the scroll below you can join her facebook page her books on diet and health are available on amazon link and are flashing in the scroll below we will be sharing a video friends on this upcoming programs on ask the masters and other programs at shloka after this session so to register you can contact the number flashing on the screen it's 9163668528 Uh, the online uh, yogic food program happens to be on 14th of february saturday um children's online yoga camp bloom is happening from the 12th of february to the 18th of february 24 day online for adults happens from the 24th of february my favorite number okay so uh, thank you miss kotla it's been such a pleasure and i think the first time i got to know that you're a modernite i was going through your profile and i was so elated so it's been such it's a modernite too have, yes 2009 pass out so thank you so much for gracing us and we've had a wonderful time uh, participants have enjoyed the session um so what's up i am looking at the end really touching it Uh, Shloka, we Are must you? have a round two with the Ishi, ma'am. 
Absolutely, absolutely, with pleasure. <laughs> I've always loved listening to her. She's so good. Nidhi ji is a fan. She told me Ishi is fantastic. Ishi is fantastic. Oh. She's <laughs> truly, Thank truly. So much. I'm so happy to contribute to this. It's a passion for me, and I'm really, really. And I think it is the need of the uh, you know art to adapt uh, to wellness and health practices, so that we can you know. Absolutely, battle not only this pandemic but the others that may be coming. Yes, yes and well, I think we have shown a lot of resilience as Indians. You know, we yes, we, yes, yes. I don't know. People don't know. There's no answers at why we are in a place like this today when people are really out there and unmasked, and uh, so something that is in our favor. And uh, touch wood for that. Yes, touch wood for that. And I and think we have the advantage, advantage of the Ayurveda. Or the amoeba, or the new variant doesn't knock at our doors. Um, let's keep our immunity high. Let's boost it up, and let's follow the practices that have been given to us by our Vedic uh, forefathers and all our munis and rishis, and build a more healthier future for the country as well. उन्होंने ये कहा था, एक कहावत थी, जैसा अन वैसा मन. बिल्कुल बिल्कुल. I agree with you. What are we talking about? Aren't we talking about it the same way? Yes. So we were ahead of our times. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, again, heartfelt gratitude to all the co-hosts. I'd like to take their names. The YouTube partners, Sadguru Darshan, Mahabharat TV, Yogic Life. We've launched Yogic Life, the channel. Uh, Spiritual Guru, Mystic World, Wild Films India. Facebook partners, uh, yeah, Union TV, Mystic World. Thank you, thank you, Rupin. Yes, Mr. Dang, thank you so much for giving us your platform of the Wild Films India, uh, and the Facebook platforms, uh, Union TV, Mystic of World. Volunteers are the backbone of what we do. I can never thank you enough. Tirelessly working to make our programs happen. Many, some of the volunteers don't want me to take their names, but I'm going to take the others who have offered me this privilege. Prasanna Akka, Aparna Akka, Amri Sanna. Arjun Anna, Sangeeta Akka, Abhay Anna, thank you so much for volunteering and making this happen. Our digital team, uh, based out of the Abu Dhabi digital link, thank you so much for your willingness and involvement in making this happen. Thank you so much, and your viewers for being a part of this session. Thank you, Ishi. Thanks, I think this uh, program is incomplete without the viewers. They've always trusted us with adding well-being to their lives. So thank you for giving us this privilege. Thank you. And we'll be back again on Ask the Masters very soon. Namaste. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much, Ishini. You were wonderful. <laughs>